Carol, thank you so much for having me to your studio today. I want to talk all about your work and your process, but let's start at the beginning. When did you fall in love with art? Well, I don't think there's a particular point that I fell in love with art. I think I always was an artist from liking to draw in color when I was a child and uh, went to IU and uh, majored in French, but I minored in art and psychology. And I really liked the way those two fit together, the art and the psychology. And uh, then the art just kind of took over. My mom was a seamstress my aunt and grandma, so I had good sewing skills, and I just kind of combined that with some drawing and painting and thing I, things I was doing, and uh, it happened. I'm fascinated to know about your studying psychology as well. Uh -huh. How did that influence your art? Well, I think um, artwork tells a lot about the artist, uh, the artist has to reveal a piece of themselves, especially if they put it out to the public. And uh, I always liked that aspect of it, the symbolism in the art and uh, the meaning of different shapes and lines and dynamics that goes on in the artwork. And uh, a lot of it just really connected with um, psychology. I prefer more abstract work to just realism, although I certainly appreciate that too, but I think somehow the abstract work um, has more to say, more deeper meaning maybe. So when you start a piece, do you have a specific meaning in mind that you want to impart or do you sort of just start and let the meaning come out? Okay, well there's two ways I work and one of them is uh, sketching in my sketchbook, and if I have a design in there, I may use colored pencil and kind of bring it to life, and then I think this would be great in fabric. So if I want to copy a sketch exactly, then I will enlarge it and make a pattern mm. and go from there. But my favorite way to work is just spontaneous, intuitively. I just um, start with the fabrics, and there may or may not be an idea in my mind. I just may play with them till they kind of all mingle and work together. And I've been using a lot of um, the fabric that I'm painting myself, as well as the commercial fabrics. So I've been combining the two of them together. So um, one piece of fabric maybe would give me the spark of an idea, mm -hmm. but you know, it's when I start putting them all together. How has your journey evolved as an artist from, from that student at IU to now? What different messages have you allowed to come out in your work? Well, I deal with emotions. I like to make visible things that you can't see with your eyes, you know, the feelings and, and the emotions and all about our journey through life. And, uh, that's what's really important to me. How long does a, a piece, especially with your fabric, how long does it generally take you from start to finish um, to have a, a completed piece? Okay, that's a pretty common question and it's really hard to answer because um, it takes a long time because I have a lot of detail. I add a lot of embellishments, which I make myself out of wire and beads and metal and various things. So but I'm usually working on two or three different ones, different sizes at the same time. So when one kind of gets a little stale, I can move to the other one, or one's almost finished, so I'll go ahead and finish that and then go back. So it's hard to, t to say, but I would say a month at the very least if I worked on just one wow. singly, yeah. Can you tell by looking at your pieces sort of where you were in your life, in your journey, if you will? Definitely. It's, it's amazing how I can do that, that it, you know, it brings back my situation at the time, the feelings I was having about it, and uh, not all of them do, but many of them do. Are you able to part with those pieces, or do you have to hang on to the ones that are uh, especially poignant? Yeah, um, it's very difficult to part with them. And just recently, I had just finished one, and it was a larger, more expensive one, and I was selling more smaller ones, and this one sold, and it's like, 
I hadn't had enough bonding time with it because mm. I just finished it, put it out there, and it sold, which is wonderful. I'd like for Ma to do that, but I did feel a little sense of separation there that Knowing that you put so much of yourself into these pieces, is it hard to to see them as commercial? Uh, is it is it hard to to sell them, to send them out into the world, uh -huh. knowing that a part of your soul is in there? Uh -huh. Well, they're certainly off for sale. However, <laughs> <laughs> like any good artist, yes. Uh, um, however. Um, I'm conflicted sometimes because I want to keep them so I can have a big exhibition. I mean, if they all sell, I have nothing to put in shows. Mm -hmm. um, and on the other hand, too, um, I think of my legacy. And, you know, I have children and grandchildren, and, you know, I want uh, something to pass on to them and for them to kind of know who Grandma was. And um, so, yeah, it works both ways. What has your art taught you? It's brought a lot of energy to my life. Um, I've gotten to know a lot of wonderful friends in the art world that I probably hadn't have known otherwise. And it makes me understand myself ever so much better, I think, than if I hadn't become an artist or been born an artist or, or whatever. Um, it's amazing, it's something I could not live without. I mean, it's like it's not optional. It's a survival skill. Mm. When you finish a piece and put it out there, do you hope that the emotions and, and the sentiments that you were feeling at the time are apparent to others, or does that not matter as much to you? Well, I think every viewer um, views the artwork through their own lens, mm -hmm. you know? Everybody sees different things and that's okay with me. I would like them to look at it and put their own thoughts and emotions into it and bring from it what they can. Uh, sometimes it's what I had intended and sometimes it's not, but that's okay too. And sometimes it just it's just there to delight the eye. Mm. I really like the color or the movement or whatever's going on and that's okay too. Do you have a favorite piece? It's usually the last piece I've done, <laughs> actually. And the piece kind of right behind you, it's called Loud and Proud. Um, mm. I voiced like that and it was a lot of fun to do because it was spontaneous and I just kept adding verticals and horizontals and you know, putting it together. And it surprised me. I didn't know it was going to be that big or that much fun. Mm. Yeah. Well, hearing about that piece makes me all the more excited to see you in action. Would you do us the pleasure of showing me a little of your work? Certainly, I'd love to. Great, thank you. Okay. Okay, Carol, at what point in the process are you with this piece? Okay, this piece I'm just beginning to play with, and this is more my spontaneous work that I talked about earlier. So I've chosen a background that I really like, and um, I have cut out pieces of fabric that have fusing on the back, so they can be fused on, okay. or the bigger pieces can be sewn on. So I just basically start playing with the pieces and here I have a piece of fabric that I painted and I just kind of folded a place that I like. So I have a lot of house imagery in my work. I did a house series of artist houses where different kinds of artists would live mm -hmm. if they had their studio and um, so I'll go with this. I cut this piece out which I have painted and stenciled and uh, that kind of goes for a roof, right. and then I have some canvas that I painted, cut it into squares, fold it, uh, fringe the edges. Okay, that could be maybe a door-like thing. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the uh, roof needs a little decor <laughs> up here, or you know, a little something down here. Now when you painted these, uh -huh. Did you have this specific piece in mind? No, 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 no. So you just paint and then you let I just them... have a collection of painted fabrics okay. right there in that bin, and then I just pull from those the colors that, that I'm looking for. Wow. And um, I'm interested in circles, too. I use circles a lot in my work. 
and uh, so I may want to do something like that put another circle in here and then maybe we'll add some verticals in here and it's interesting how the circles are kind of more calming mm -hmm. and the triangle is a little more active. And here I just have some thin strips which I really like to use. And you can see how as they're just kind of dropped here randomly, they're so dynamic, they're yeah. so active. Yeah. Something's going on, they're moving around. Mm -hmm. So um, you want to contrast that with the, the more of the calmness. And sometimes I do this, making like little stair steps up to the house, <laughs> like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and then it, it just evolves from there. I just keep working and playing with it. I may uh, want to kind of keep this activity somehow over here. It may indicate if this is an artist house, it may indicate that some kind of activity is coming the way of the artist. Mm. It may be good energy, you know, it may be something that's going to be an obstacle in the way of the artist. So that's, you know, just a very basic, fun, playful thing, how I might start on something and, and from there it would evolve, it may get bigger, or I may fold some of this over and it, it may be smaller, whatever it cares for. But I like a, a lot of bright color, a lot of action, I like something going on, and uh, then a meaning if it comes to me behind it. Carol, I talk to a lot of artists, and I don't uh -huh. always walk away feeling really inspired, but this is really inspiring to me. I, you talk about energy. This is um, uh -huh. really good energy. Yes. So thank you for showing me this and for sitting down with me. I really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of it course. was fun. Arts in Focus on PBS Fort Wayne is funded in part by the Our Foundation and the Community Foundation of Greater Fort Wayne.